we are living in very troubling times and uh, most people don't really understand what the Bible actually means when it says if God is for us who can be against us some people doubt some people say for sure is God on our side does he really mean what uh, he says in his word so now I'm going to explain so that we can understand in depth what exactly it means if God is for us who can be against us what exactly it means in, uh, from the book of uh, Romans 8:31 let me just read for you uh, Romans 8:31 it clearly says what shall we say then to these things if God be for us who can be against us now the things are the dozens of amazing proofs of God uh, God's unfailing love which is listed in the preceding verses and Romans chapter 8 contains many of the cherished verses that comfort us such as uh, like uh, in verse 1 it says therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus that is really encouraging to all of us there is no condemnation and also the one that gets us through difficult times we know that in all things god works for the good to those who love him who have been called according to his purpose that one is also very encouraging from the book of romans and also verse 31 of Romans 8 is a culmination of all those wonderful promises it reminds us who god is and how he helps us when we grasp the truth that uh, god is for us we have absolutely nothing to fear god is for us in the sense that uh, he's on our side he's uh, he's working on our behalf and uh, for our own good he has proved his benevolence that uh, in that he has adopted us that is something so unique we are adopted don't you know that you're a child of a king a child of a royal a child of the ruler the owner the creator the maker of this world and also the whole universe that's that's a major thing that's a major thing all right because we are adopted you are ado- come on my friends you may not uh, you may not be like jesus like having been there from the beginning but you are adopted you're not begotten yes but you are adopted you're a child of god all right are you seeing the point here because the bible says in romans chapter 8 verse 15 for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father god in heaven is our father we can cry abba father in heaven lord gracious hear us and we know he has given us his spirit and he has de- is he has determined to save us all and the follow up question who can be against us is uh, quite rhetorical it is another way of saying there is no one who could possibly be more powerful than god no one can destroy us and the idea is not that we will never face opposition it is simply that our opposition is doomed to failure whoever goes against you is going to fail the antichrist is going to fail they may be against us but not successfully against us that's a beautiful point about this and since god is on our side we have nothing to worry about now when you look at uh, that verse in romans 8:31 what shall we say then to these things if god be for us who can be against us when we look at that verse it's basically just an echo echo of other passages that say the similar thing Let me show you a couple of verses which echo just the same same thing. All right? In the book of Psalms 118 verse 6, it says, "The Lord is with me; I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me?" Hmm. That is really powerful. Look at 2 Kings 6:16. "Don't be afraid." The prophet, of course Elisha, answered, "Those who are with us are more than those who are with them." 
Also, the book of Psalms 56 verse 9 says, My enemies will turn back when I call for help. By this, I will know that God is for me. Also, the book of Hebrews 13 verse 6 says, So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? <laughs> this one, I'm sure it, it gives shivers to Satan and these people who are trying so hard to destroy this world and to destroy the people of God. But what can mere mortals do to me? They can kill the body, but they can kill the soul. <laughs> you see the point here. And Psalms 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Some, sometimes our hearts respond to verses like this with contonation. Uh, um, I tell you, who can be against me? And the IRS, my in-laws, terrorists, cor uh, corrupt politicians, and every other person, and the list goes on. They try to scare us. If you look at politicians and the, uh, and, and the, the, the health guys, they're all trying to scare us. Oh, you're going to die. Oh, you're going to die. This is going to happen to you. But our real-life enemies seem to overshadow the ideas conveyed in Romans 8. Despite spiritual promises, we still have to endure physical, mental, emotional struggles so much that we may wonder if God is truly for us. But let me tell you something. God is with us. And the man who penned Romans 8 verse 31, of course the Apostle Paul, faced the same struggles we face and many more. And he lists some of his sufferings. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 28. Let me show you some of the things that uh, Paul was going through. He went through a lot of things and uh, he tried to encourage us and to tell us, guys, I'm also going through the same things. Is not you alone, all right? Is not you alone. They're trying the much as they can to pull me back, pull me down. But I know whom I have believed. Listen to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 28. He says, Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in death often. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stones, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in deep, in journeys often, the perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and in thirst and, and fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Paul tells us so clearly, guys, the things that you, you feel that you're going through, I also went through the same. Jesus himself, himself being God, he said the Son of Man had nowhere to lay his head. Jesus did not even have a house, live alone a car, live alone property and cattle and whatever you may call them. He faced it rough. Probably some days he went without food because they were walking and doing this and this. And, and come on, my friends. No temptation is, has never happened to, uh, has only happened to you alone. It has happened to many many other people nothing is new under the sun all right paul was telling us this as proof that he did not write from a plastic bubble of ethereal peace however his intimate relationship with the risen christ has become his all-consuming passion he said he considered everything else garbage dung compared to knowing christ listen to what he said Listen to what he said in the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. He said, But what things were gain to me, those are that I counted loss for Christ? Yeah, doubtless, and uh, 
I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Are you counting things as garbage to win Christ? Are you? Paul had learned the secret of contentment, whether he was celebrated or imprisoned, and uh, he stated this secret. He told us, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13 So when Paul writes, if God is for us, who can be against us? He's comparing earthly opposition to the eternal power and presence of the Almighty God. And he declares the winner. No one can overcome God's love for us. And Jesus taught us the same thing. In the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 4 to 5, he said, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that they can do no more. But I will show of you who you should fear. Fear him who after your body has been killed has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. His point was just as Paul that no matter what may happen to us here on earth, there is a higher reality and there is a bigger war than that which we think we face. And God is the ultimate winner. God is the ultimate winner. Because the Bible told us in the book of Ephesians 6 verse 12, For we wrestle uh, and not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we are, if we are on his side, then we will win too. We are going to win. Let me show you where we are going to win. <laughs> the Bible told us in the book of Re uh, Revelation chapter uh, 20, Revelation 21, verse 7 to 8, he says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and the unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and the whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Are you going to be an overcomer? Or are you going just to be silent and do nothing? Are you going just to sit down and do as the government and as every other person is telling you to do? Are you going to be someone who takes every instruction from the Word of God? Let me read you a final point here in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 27. It says, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Are you written in that book? Are you sure you're saved? Because if you're not saved, then uh, my friends, you're in trouble. For you to be saved, you just need to understand five things. You have to understand that you're a sinner. And after understanding you're a sinner, you have to look for the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news about what Jesus did for us. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, it gives us an account of what Jesus did. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And after you hear the gospel, you have to understand the gospel. Because without understanding, you cannot be saved. We believe from our hearts. We don't believe from our minds. And to take take information from our minds to our heart it, you have to understand it all right you understand that for sure jesus didn't die for his sins he died for you you can you can know that uh, jesus died fine but that one doesn't give you eternal life you have to understand that he did this for you then after you understand then you believe you believe for sure from your heart and then after you believe, you confess. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So from what you have in your heart now, speak it out to God. Just tell Jesus, Jesus, I know, I believe you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again. The third day according to the scriptures. And I accept this payment, this atonement. 
and for sure that's it you're saved sealed and sanctified unto the day of redemption and that's the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you did learn something and please uh, remember you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family and also don't forget to favorite our podcast and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever you post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need uh, step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends and family or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website keithumwoki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.